All right, so last time we were taking a look at 3.1, and we had talked about several different things. The last question that we were talking about, um, or still had yet to talk about, um, takes a look at um, the ideas of these properties um, of whole numbers, but in relation to subtraction. And this is a really good one for us to end with in this particular section and to start with today, um, because I actually gave you many of the answers to these last time, so we'll see if you remember. Um, I, gave, I gave them to you when we were actually talking about the properties for um, addition. So closure was the idea about the door being closed. So do, um, do our whole numbers, okay, those are our counting numbers, including zero, have the property of closure with subtraction? They don't, Taylor. Can you give me an example? Nope, it doesn't, but there is an example. That one would work. Okay, so if we did a whole number zero minus the whole number of three, this ends up giving me the number that's negative three, and this is not a whole number. Right? Two whole numbers that are subtracted, and the answer is not a whole number. So there is not a property for whole number subtraction for whole numbers. There will be for integers, but not for whole numbers. How about commutative? No. What does the commutative property look like? Okay. Can you give me two numbers, Audrey? Okay. Right. And we'll do, we'll do subtraction since we're doing subtraction this slide. 2 minus 3 and 3 minus 2. Are these equal to each other? No. What is 2 minus 3? What is it? Negative 1. And what is 3 minus 2? Positive 1. So the order of subtraction actually really matters. It didn't matter with addition. It does matter with subtraction. So there is not a commutative property for subtraction. And there won't be for integers either. I just told you a minute ago that the closure property will work with integers um, and subtraction. Commutative property is still not going to work. It's still not going to give us the same answer both sides. How about the associative property? We haven't talked, we have not talked about this one. What would you suppose? Probably not going to work. So we can actually create an example and test it. So um, we'll use the same two and the three that you guys used for just a minute ago. And pick me another number. Two, three, four, five, something. Okay, so we'll use four. Um, so we're going to test this numbers over here. And then we're checking to see whether or not it's equal to the numbers if I do it in a different order over here. Okay. So this would be the associative property. If it works, then I should be able to put an equal sign between these two values. <coughs> All right, so we did 2 minus 3 just a moment ago. That's negative 1. What's negative 1 minus 4? Negative 5. How about the other side? So, again, I'm testing whether these work in the middle. Um, I've got... 2 minus, what's 3 minus 4? Negative 1. What is 2 minus negative 1? That's 3. 5 equal to 3? Negative 5 equal to 3? No. These are not equal. So this one does not work either. Last one, identity property. Identity property, excuse me. Do you remember what the identity property was for the addition? Yeah, if you add the number zero, then it doesn't change the value, right? So this one sounds like it might work on this one. And it does in one direction, but not in both. So we have to be able to take the number zero. Well, three minus zero. That's three. So what's the problem? Yeah, the identity property has to work from both directions. So what's 0 minus 3? Negative 3, which is not the same number I started with, which was 3. Right? These two don't match the original number. So the identity property doesn't work either. Okay. So we actually fail quite a bit on subtraction. In fact, all of them fail, at least in regard to whole numbers. Any questions on that one? All right. 